2000s tattooing was like, in a way, like the WWF. Like, <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, he's like, it was crazy. It was these cool. Characters. It was just like these characters. <laughs> hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to Honest Tattooer, the podcast for tattoo artists, tattoo enthusiasts, and pretty much for everybody that loves tattoos just like we do. So this week, we've got a great show for you guys. We have my co-host, Matriano. Hey, how you doing, everybody? And we have Christian Masso with us today. What's up, brother? What's up, guys? How's everyone doing out there? Well, we're so glad to have you here, dude. And usually, we'd like to start off by letting you introduce yourself to the audience, to everybody here. And uh, just go off, tell us your name, how long you've been tattooing, uh, and a little bit about your style. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so my name's Christian Masso. Uh, I've been tattooing for about 20 years now. Uh, and uh, my style is, uh, my, my favorite styles would be uh, Jap- like Neo-Japanese style. Uh, I love black and gray realism. And I just love really punchy, high contrast color pieces. Sick. Are, yeah, my favorite pieces do. Yeah. Awesome. And uh, usually to get the ball rolling, we like to talk about something that we worked on this week. So I'll start off and I'll talk about something that I finished today, actually. Nice. So uh, one cool thing about today's client, uh, my client, Tay. So Tay, I actually tattooed his dad. Oh, nice. And I did a half sleeve on his dad and he saw it. He loved it. He had no tattoos. And he was like, damn, I want to get tattooed too. So they actually, they both, they come from like, I think from like PA. So they like drove out here and, uh, today it was one of those things where he wanted, um, two like gladiators kind of fighting, you know what I'm saying? And one of his design, his designs actually. So like in the beginning when I started using artificial intelligence to help me draw shit. (gasps) Oh man, the the, the dark side. Oh yeah. People hate, people love it or hate (laughs) it. But guess what? Mid journey keeps getting better and it keeps getting smarter Uh and keeps drawing hands a lot better guys v5 is out and it draws hands a lot better than it did before so like um yeah but honestly like this was so such a good you know experience to use mid journey for something where like man in the past i've had to do gladiators and things like that before and i always had to like resort to like the very limited uh amount of reference that you could get without having to just go off the top especially when you're trying to do something that has a little bit more of a realistic feel and things like that So like mid journey was great. It helped me get exactly what I wanted. Um, Gave me so many options to be able to like kind of remix the things. And then like, uh, like always, you know, with these things, like when you have like an armor and all of these little tiny details at first, I was like, oh yeah, dude, we'll be done in like, you know, two sessions. (sighs) No, bro. It was like, I think we finished in like, you know, three, maybe four sessions instead. It was like double as long as what I thought it was going to take, especially once we did the background, you know, because yeah. then to make everything work, like it needed to have a background. And the more we did, you could tell that he was like, oh, my God, this sucks. <laughs> <You know? laughs> but uh, I'm really pumped on it. It was cool. And most of all, like, thank you so much today for like, you know, sticking with me and doing that tattoo. And like today he was so pumped. And he was like, I think overall, the my favorite thing is when a client tells you like, this is better than I ever thought that it could be. That's a great feeling. You know? And uh, most of all, it was his first tattoo. Cool. Um, awesome. and I think that's badass. And like, of course he was like, you know, we, we went from forearm to, to wrist and he's like, damn, I really want to fucking not make it a full sleeve. Of course, <laughs> of course you course, do. Bro. Yeah, progression. Of course, you know? So like, yeah, man, uh, tattooing, I still love it. What did you work on this week? Yeah. I, I still love it too, man. <laughs> yeah. It's hard to get uh, sick of it. You know? Yeah. Uh, so I got to do a really cool piece. Uh, this week I got to wrap up a tattoo that I started like seven years ago, man. I, those are always weird to come back into. Uh, it's like a time capsule, seeing yourself seven years ago and then seven, you know, seeing yourself now. And um, you know, I, it was it was a great piece to work on. It's a full Disney sleeve. You know, I I love doing them, uh, especially when it's the, the not the like two dimensional style, like when it's more like that like computer graphic style where it's like Pixar style. Pixar, Pixar style. style. I love that man. I could do that all day. I love it. So it's actually it was, a style in uh, Mid Journey that you can re- replicate. No, yes. It is. yes. Oh my God. Ah. Yeah, yeah find cool. other things that you would like in that style. Wow. You can make sleeves out of that. Oh my Sick. God. Yeah, serious, right? Uh, that thing is going to open up a, can, a huge can of worms. You know? Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. I, I think it's going to be cool for uh, like customers to kind of be like, this is kind of what I want, but I want you to draw it. Yeah. That's going to cut down a lot. 
on, sure. on that. So that's going to be cool. But sorry about that. So yeah, I got to wrap up this Disney sleep. It was awesome to really get that sense of like when you finish something that's big and you're like that last, like, all right, that last wipe and you're like, get up and check it out. Like there's just something so cleansing about coming uh, to the end of that journey, especially after a long time. So that piece was really fun to. Did you up. feel that you needed to touch up any of the older stuff that was seven years old? You know, uh, it, it's really interesting because like where the pieces butt up, you can, I mean, listen, you're at that point, like seven years, you're getting sun wear and tear, you know, you're getting just kind of life wear and tear. I mean, like your, your skin regenerates and fades and everything. So, you know, I definitely felt like I, there was a couple of like, you know, outlines that needed to be re reboldened or like colors that need to be popped up, uh, you know, and, and, and stuff that I didn't do seven years ago, I do now. Right. Like I love putting in like very high, like, like kind of like dual, like light sources, you know, and, and, Putting that into an old tattoo is really cool too, right? Because it's already there. Yeah. So now you're just kind of like finessing it in. It's yeah. like uh, it's like airbrushing. And like when you're using your uh, like Procreate and you could just like airbrush on top of a layer and you're like, yeah, totally different. <laughs> yeah. So it felt like that. It was like very kind of like uh, fun to yeah. do that, but it was, it, it definitely made the whole thing kind of culminate, you know, and come together. Nice. So was, yeah. Yeah. Sure. Whenever I, uh, I'm working on a piece that requires multiple sessions, I always feel like, even if it's only over a couple of months, I feel like I want to go back into my first layer yeah. and just re, you know, redo the outlines or redo the blacks just so that everything kind of matches up and sure. the final photo, everything looks like I just did it that day. Yeah, absolutely. I, I can't help but do that. I'm like, oh man, is it in no matter what, if you, you can black something out and it could always be blacker. Yeah, it could I mean, just be like, you know, it's like another layer of black. It's going to make it darker. Yeah. It's going to look really it's, good. It, it does make it darker. Like you could go over it a hundred times. As long as it like heals in between, it does. It just gets darker and darker and be more beautiful. And uh, we were touching on it a, a little bit and we were talking about, you know, using different blacks. Um, as far as black goes, I feel like, you know, I've used a lot of things over the years. Um, I started off with... The first thing that I ever used was Pelican, actually, because mm. that's what they had at the, at the shop where the, I yeah, was apprenticing sure, sure, sure. at. Uh, then, then they had Kurosumi, Oof. and <laughs> after that, yeah, the, it it didn't get better. Yeah. And then, <laughs> and then, like, like Pelican, it was cool because it was super thin. It was so thin. But then it would make a mess, uh, you know. Like it would they stopped making everywhere. Pelican in big bottles because they didn't want tattooers. Tattooers using, it. using that's that crazy. Thing. Yeah, yeah. I it used to say not for tattoos. Yes, yeah. yes. I remember yeah. that. That was like, oh my god, because you could get it at like any art store. Yeah, and like uh, I, I was like, I can't believe that you could just buy this here. It was crazy, you know. Yeah. But I mean, now you can get it on Amazon. So oh, <laughs> I, I can get anything on Amazon. Oh my god, you know, it's it's crazy. It's crazy that it's that available. Yes. You know, like I, you can have a full tattoo shop prime delivered the next day. Yeah. Yeah. You know I mean, yeah, pretty much. And have no idea how to use the stuff that you're ordering, you know? Yeah. I mean, but then you could just go on YouTube and watch a video. We've, we've <laughs> talked about Triano and Triano, you know, that was his first attempt. He's yeah. like, I'm going to order some stuff. And, uh, wow. yeah, I, had no idea. I, like, I applaud your bravery. It didn't know? go well. Yeah, no, was, he's, just, he's still on the run. <laughs> no, I, Listen, when you got that tattoo bug, like when you're first starting out, it's it's like that's all you want to talk about and be around. It's like it gets you bad. Yeah. It gets you bad, you know, and it, probably in a way that no other like hobby or passion does because everything that we do is permanent. So it's not like, you know, if you you can have like a collection of like comic books or a collection of like movies or even a car or something like that. And it's like, it's, it's, it's there, but for how long, but like with a tattoo, it's like, it's a commitment. Man. Oh yeah. It's such a commitment. Yeah. You know, learning to tattoo should scare the shit out of you. If and the people scared. that it doesn't scare, I worry about them. <sighs> yeah. Like they're, they don't have not having that fear. I feel like it, it kind of brings uh, an element of like not giving a fuck, which could be good, but also like, Terrible. Gonna, yeah, it could be really, really bad. <laughs> right, too. Right, right. Yeah. Recklessness. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yes, yeah. recklessness. Um, my nephew, who I, I just tattooed, he just turned 18 um, a couple of months ago, and uh, he decided to buy an eBay kit also, or mm. I guess it was an Amazon kit. And uh, I was like, all right, man, I mean, I did it, so I'm not going to tell you not <laughs> yeah, that, right? I can't be that guy. That. But uh, he showed me what he was getting, and I was like, all right, this is cool, whatever. 
take all the ink that's coming out of here and just throw it They're right in the garbage. 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 If that you're going to really man. do this, I'll Absolutely. give you my ink because you're going to fuck people up with this ink. And he, he, it scared him and he wound up returning everything. And he was like, wow. Right, if, it, if it's that serious, I'm not even going to bother. You're like, no way. I, I gave him credit for that. <laughs> what is in that stuff? You know I mean? It's like, what is in that ink? You know, how could you, how could, that's just irresponsible to distribute that stuff. Yeah. yeah it's just, un, I mean, come on, you know, it's, it, no one knows. There's nothing <laughs> like you have no idea what it is. You know, it could be well, anything. It could be made up in someone's bathtub, you know, mm -hmm. you, nobody knows and they don't have to know. Well, the, the thing about tattooing is that, you know, it started off as like, you know, something that people did. Then it became a craft mm -hmm. and then it became a business. Yeah. You know? that's and true. then it became a business and th we're still there and, yeah. and there's nothing to stop that. And, and it's crazy. Cause like, even within our generation, it went from being a business to being big business, Ooh, you know, yeah. like within our generation of tattooers, when like some of like the tattooer owned companies got sold off to like big, big, com yeah. big business, yeah, parent companies. Yeah, but yeah. to big parent companies that own multiple sure. of the same companies, you know what I'm saying? And yeah. stuff like that. And that's, just going down. And like, uh, even with like tattoo shops, you know, like, uh, back in the day, there wasn't really a thing to like, you know, like it would be a tattoo shop owned by a tattooer, you yeah. know what I'm saying? And and that was the way that it was, or a family, yeah. you know, yeah. uh, or something of the sort. But I, but now it's like, you know, there's plenty of tattoo shops that are owned by non-tattooers or companies, you know? It's crazy to yeah. me that, that, that exists. I remember like growing up and it's like, you knew which towns had tattoo shops. Like it wasn't like a town had multiple tattoo shops. It'd be like, this town has one, this town has, like, it was like, it was almost like special to be like, oh my God, that's a tat, that, that's a tat, real tattoo shop. You know what I mean? And like, I remember as a kid, there was one in, uh, in like the town next to mine. So me and my buddies would go and just like look in the window. Like, <laughs> <laughs> just be like, oh my God, this is a real tattoo shop. Yeah. I get chased away. Like the dude would just chase us. Some old surly dude would just chase us away. It man. was like a rite of passage to it have that. that. Now they have the tattoo shops in the malls and like just Crazy. become very, you know. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah, yeah. it's like the demand for it though. Like, so the reason why there was only one tattoo shop in five towns was because like one in a hundred people were getting a tattoo now like it's so uncommon to see someone without a tattoo even if it's a little like you know single you know like you know what's crazy about that though because i looked this up it, it feels like there's so many people have tattoos it's still only 25 percent of people wow. have a tattoo it's, that that's interesting that's yeah. way less than i thought but yeah, maybe 25 percent of the people have multiple tattoos no is at least one no way really yeah, yeah. wow wow yeah. wow so i mean i i mean there used to not be enough food to go around, but now it's like everyone can eat. Yeah. And, just, and, and, you know, I mean, it, it's like, it doesn't seem like it's slowing down to you. Oh, it's no, just definitely crazy. not. It's yeah. Like, yeah. No, no, no. People yeah. are getting more tattoos, feeling more comfortable. And like, um, like what I was saying, like I tattooed my client's son, you know, and I'm sure his son got inspired because he saw his dad get a huge sure. tattoo. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like as time passes too, like there's a, uh, you know, business owners now that are hiring people. If you see your boss and he's covered in tattoos, you're going to be like, Oh, I think it's pretty cool to get yeah. tattoos here. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like it's, it, which was rare, you know, like to see like the person that was like either the owner or the, the manager or the boss, like come out and he's like, yeah, I have tattoos and it's cool. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like now it's a lot more common. Yeah. It used to be sure. an identity It'd be like, Oh, that guy with all the tattoos. Now it's like, <laughs> like the, every, like, like a lot of guys have yeah. a lot of tattoos. Yeah. You know, it's not like an identity like it used to be. Yeah. Uh, but it, it's like, I don't know, man, how do you guys feel about it? I, I feel like it's kind of like the, the thing about, ta I love tattoos, man. So I, I love doing them. I love to see them and stuff like that. But it's like, uh, it's, it's grown so much that do you feel like it gets less special as more people get tattoos or you think it just is adding to the culture? Of it. it just adds to the culture. Yeah. More people that get tattooed, the better. Yeah, yes, I, I agree. hundred percent. Yeah. yeah. Talking about tattoos, where are your tats, bro? Yeah, where's your tats? <laughs> <laughs> there they go. Yeah, let's go. This one's going to kill you right here, dude. Oh, oh tribal. Look at sick, that. Oh, a, bro. I still like it, dude. I when still did you get that it. in 1998? Fucking dude, dust dude. till dawn, motherfucker, right there, bro. It's not peeking Damn, out of the neck. Dude. Cold, cold blooded. Cold blooded, man. I'll tell you what, man. Uh, so, yo, this tattoo was done by. Um, so, at the time, my two idols were Eric Merrill and Joe Capobianco. Yeah. Like how, you know what I mean? That was like 
they were they were it, you know, and and this was a collaboration between the two of them. Oh, that's fucking that's awesome, awesome, dude. Too. That's oh, yeah, sick. That's a cool piece. Yeah. Yeah, that's sick. Yeah, yeah. I love that piece. You know, I'll tell you what, there's no better way to get better uh than to watch someone who you love tattoo tattoo. Oh, of course. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, it's yeah. like I remember just watching that's it. <laughs> I remember just watching uh these guys uh and I watching their color theory and watching how they were blending and watching how they were uh, kind of getting these, just marrying two colors that didn't seem like they should go together and, uh, and being like, wow, this is awesome. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I mean, I, I'll tell you what, uh, those guys were amazing to watch. And then I got to work with Bugs and work and he was doing a guest spot at a shop that I was at. And if you want to talk about a dude who just has, like his color blending and his co like dude i've never seen anything like it in my life i haven't heard that name in so long in so long so yeah, guys if you don't know yeah. this name so bugs so my very first tattoo convention that i went to was the new york city tattoo convention yes. and he would always do this tattoo convention and he's the only person that was doing tattoos that were outside of what everyone yes. else was doing the yeah. first the first person that was doing something that didn't look like a tattoo that you saw everybody else do. It was, it was, his work was cubist, like yes, fine yeah. art yes. style tattooing, things that look like Picasso type shit. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? But as tattoos. And that was like, oh shit, there are no limits, you know? Like yeah, he yeah. showed you that there are no limits really like it to, to be able to do something that could be in, in a different art form a different art realm you know to make it tattooable and still make it good yeah, you know yeah. and i think that that was what's smart it's like he could still make it look good as a tattoo he was the yeah. first one that i saw like saturation the way that he saturates like it yeah was, whoa it was mind-blowing he is uh, like it was it was cool because uh watching him tattoo and and uh he, you know he was he was i think at the shop for a week uh at the time i was working with mario barth and uh he he th those two are friends so he would come and do this guest spot there and, and I would just watch him tattoo, man. And, and what was funny about him is that he's just like, you know, he, the guy, some guy was like, Hey, today I want to get a, you know, I want to get a bear tattoo. And the guy would be like, you're getting a dragonfly or you're getting nothing. <laughs> 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 and like, he would just say it just like that, dude. And the guy's like, I, I guess I'm going to dragonfly. <laughs> dude, that's was the he, way he tattooed. Is Bugs a French, like French Canadian? Is yeah, he French yeah. Canadian? I don't know if he's French or Canadian. Or just French French. Just French. I, one or the other, I'm not sure, but uh, he's definitely French. Okay. And he was just like, bro, you're getting the thing that I want to paint. Like, Dude, in my head, I just heard yeah. him be like, suck up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude, I, I, I miss that element of tattooing. It was so cool to like have the, these like wild cards. You know what I mean? Like you just don't know. You hear about this person and you're like, what is like, what are they going to be like, man? And yeah. like, it's like, then it's like bug shows up, man. And you're just like, it's crazy. Like, but that was, uh, it was almost like, 2000s tattooing was like in a way like the wwf like yeah i mean like he's like it was crazy it was these cool characters. It was just like these characters and like everyone had this personality of like who they were gonna be before you met them yeah because there was no social media so you didn't know what they were gonna be like you couldn't like identify with them on a video you would just see like a magazine article oh yeah and they'd be these like larger than life like oh bro uh, paul booth and, yeah. like oh, the undertaker dude. bro yeah. exactly yeah, exactly <laughs> paul like, booth the undertaker oh my god man i mean <laughs> i think it was like the undertaker meets anvil yeah <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah exactly it's like then it would be like i mean dude at the time i mean and this is all 2000s remember brandon bond yeah, yeah dude, man. just like running the game for like rowdy years. boys right there. <laughs> yeah, dude. Dude. it was just crazy like you would just have these characters these like characters and they would just come in and everyone had their own style man then like capo bianco he was like the rockabilly yeah dude it yeah, was like yeah. a very kind of like wwf vibe His hair just to kept it. getting taller taller and taller, taller man. And taller, i love bro. it dude i love that hair uh he's the best man but it was just like it was so larger than life that i think that that's what like really intrigued me into that kind of like that world that it was like man this is such a you know diverse dynamic absolutely thing where you can have your own style and 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 this style could be next to this style and it doesn't have to be better. It's just different. You know what I mean? And you can yeah. collect from these different people. That was uh, so astounding to me 
that's like what hit me. Yeah. Dude, big shout out to all the freaking tattooers all the that legends. have done it yeah. fucking before us, man. That Absolutely. Fucking have, Thank you guys for paving you know, the way. paved the way and did things that not only did amazing tattoos, but inspired a bunch of other tattooers for sure. to want to do this shit sure. you know, that we do and, and keep, you know, pushing things forward. Because like, I feel like, you know, Joe Cat, big guy where we're like, man, saw his stuff. I was like, damn, dude, that's so sick. You yeah. know? So I got tattooed by Joe Cap. Wow. And uh, so I went with the guy that owned the shop that I was working at before I was working here. And so I, I got to watch him get tattooed mm. for five hours. Wow. And then I got to watch myself get tattooed for a couple of hours after that. Yep. And I went back to my shop after that. And I was like, all right, well, I'm going to tattoo like Joe Cat from now on. Yeah. <laughs> I, did, I, did the same thing, dude. I did the same thing, dude. Yeah. I threw away some colors and I was like, I saw how he, what yeah. he was doing. And I'm like, I don't need this. Don't need this. This, this works better. Yellow is going to be my new highlight. Bro, I'm putting yellow yeah, highlights on exactly, face. Exactly. Like there's a light bulb on a face yeah, right on there. Face. Remember how I said I do dynamic twos and light sources on my tattoos? Yeah, yeah man. That is all coming from there, you know? Uh, you know, I think that the thing about tattooing is that uh, the, the hardest thing, you know, we have tattoo contests, you know what I mean? But tattooing is not a contest. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And that's the hardest thing to explain to people, especially young tattooers is that it's not about being, it's not about like, I'm going to, it is kind of like a little bit about being better, like as I, like in the sense of like, I'm going to do my craft to the highest degree that I can, but it's about being different artistically and being able to create something that is special and unique and, and to be like, it stands its ground and uh, it has a place in the world of tattooing. You know, that's like, so to me, that's like the thing that blows my mind. It keeps me coming back every day, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Awesome. Tattoos. <laughs> a good tattoo should be good for you. Good for your client. Good for tattooing. Ooh, yeah. I like that. <laughs> all three. That's all. all I guess, what is that? <laughs> 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 all right, I'm the wrong word, but you guys know what I mean. Yeah. Good tattoo. Like good for that you. Good. good for the client. Good, good for good tattooing. One. You know yeah. what I'm saying? If it's pushing everybody in a better direction, then you're doing good shit, man. Yeah. That's going to be better. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. You just got to keep the, uh, you know what it is? Because uh, like when you see a good tattoo, even if it's a style that you would never get, it might inspire you to get a tattoo. You know yeah. what I mean? Like I never, like it might be like, I never even thought about getting one until I saw that. And I wouldn't get that, but you know, I, now I'm in, the, now I understand there's uh, different things. And yeah. that, I hear that people say that a lot. And they're like, you know, I just had to, you know, uh, like, you know, it's like, People will be like, oh man, this guy came up to me and he's, you know, was admiring my piece. He's like, I know never like tattoos until I saw yours. That that feels good. And that's good for, like you said, good for tattooing. You know yeah, what I mean? That's good for tattooing. Yeah. If you're breaking someone's like expectation of what sure. like, oh wow, I've never seen art like that. Like uh my client, you know, Frank that has his legs done and like he goes to a lot of different places and he told me that it's like, man, I've had old people that they're like, Wow. Yeah. I've seen tattoos, but that looks like art that's and like, a good feeling that's a good fucking yeah, feeling you absolutely. know somebody that's much older from a generation that didn't really care or appreciate tattooing because you know what they saw in their time was just like the old sailor style like right not even that clean just like it's in there it bro. On there yeah. not even in their time though i was talking to my neighbor the other day and she was saying like why does your tattoos look so much different than everything else I see? Yeah. I was like, because yeah. 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 like, I do it good. That's, That's a good job, baby. <laughs> I like that. I like that. Absolutely, man. But no, there's a lot of tattooers out there who are just doing it for the sake of, you know, I need to put food on the table. Dude, and, yeah, exactly. You know, it's just another job. They don't have their heart into it. Yeah. And then there's people like everybody else that we work with and you and you and we do it because we love it. And yeah. we, we put our, our love into it. Sure. And you can tell the difference. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, it's, it's tattooing. Like it's one of those things like you were saying, like, I think it is a competition and it's, it, it's a competition with yourself. Yes. Nice. It's a competition from the tattooer that you were yesterday and that tattooer that you want to be in the next five years, in right. the next 10 years. Yep. And in your case, 20 years Crazy. later. Crazy. You know, I can't like, believe it. Yeah. I know every day. Dude, I, I tell people like, oh man, I've been down like 17 fucking years, dude. Yeah, what the dude. Where did the time crazy, go? <laughs> like, where did the time go? So you, you, you've seen it change too, man. Yeah. Like you've seen yeah. tattooing change. Yeah. You know? I've seen tattooing change, you know, like, uh, you know, especially just from getting my first tattoo job, 
you know, I showed up with just some printed photos, you know, nice. like on, on a, you know, a flip book, man. Like that's how yeah. I got my first tattoo yeah. job. Yeah. Like now it's totally a different game. Crazy, Somebody man. comes to get a job and it's like, let me see your Instagram. Let me see yeah. what you got going on. Let me see how you present yourself. Let me see how you're like, cause that's huge. Yeah. And low that guys, if you go get a job somewhere and I go look at your Instagram and I see nothing but a bunch of freaking bullshit in there of you partying with your friends and your girlfriend and I don't care about any of that, yeah. bro. You're not carrying yourself like a professional. That's you why I have two pages. Yeah. 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 I don't, don't, you know, cause when people look at that, they're going <laughs> to, um, one thing about tattooing that's really interesting is like people feel a connection to you before you meet them. Yes. Cause they literally will go through every picture that's on your Instagram and it's cool. Cause they want to feel who they're, they want a sense of who they're working with. You yes. know what I mean? So Which like, is still good. Like you should still yeah. have a good balance of like a little bit of who you are, but enough right. of what you do. But like, yeah, a hundred percent. But like when you start putting up stuff there that is divisive and, or, or like, you know, like, like kind of like a hard, like kind of like, ugh, like this is not something you put in your professional thing because For like sure. when you're doing a tattoo, like, the energy that you put into that, this, and I'm not trying to talk like new age energy, but like the energy that you put into that tattoo is that's what the person remembers forever. Yeah. I mean, if you were, if you come in and bro, no one cares if you had a fight with your, that's a big, big, big click clap, you know? bro. Yo, thank you, man. The, uh, the, the, like people don't care. Like when we're here, we're on stage. You know what I mean? And the stage is professional give them a good experience because you know what, when they leave, you want them to tell the story of how awesome it was. You don't want them to be like, yo, he got into a fight with his girlfriend before he came in. So he was in a bad mood. And like, it sounds crazy, but like that's going into your skin, man. That's going into your skin forever. You yeah. know what I mean? So uh, kind of along the same topic, but a little bit different. My barber is going through a divorce, Oh boy! right? I see him once a month for the past like eight haircuts. That's all you heard. <laughs> all <I> heard about. <laughs> <laughs> like, exactly. shut up, man. Exactly, oh, man. Dude. Exactly. You're like, this is what I'm trying to relax, bro. <laughs> right, bro. Exactly, man. It makes me not want to go back. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. It makes yeah. you not want to go back. And the thing is, like, you're telling us the story of that now. You're not telling the story, but he cuts my hair good. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, it's yes. like, and, and that's yes. the thing. You want people to be like, yo, honestly, man, it's like this guy gave me a great experience in the, in the shop. Like if you give them the, you know, a crappy experience or like, they're like, uh, man, this guy was just such a, he was being a dick. And I know he wasn't mad at me. He was mad at something else, but he put, put it into my tat. It's like, dude, that carries on forever. Yeah, you know I mean? for sure. So. I read this comment the other day and like uh, somebody else's page, um, they were kind of posting a thing about, uh, um, tattooers to just tattoo the whole time with their headphones, you know? Uh. And there was like a bunch of comments on it. And I read this one comment that I thought was really, really good. And it was like, uh, I got yelled at by this old nurse, you know, because I did her tattoo and I didn't talk to her a little time. And she was like, hey, buddy, you have terrible bedside like uh, manners, you know, like you oh, never even, are you going to talk to me or what? This is like the way, like she told him, you know, yeah. and like since then he's like, I've always talked to every client, yeah. you know, like and, and, and try to connect with them. Yes. Uh, and then I started looking at my at the tattoos as the the party favor to the party mm, you know right, what i'm saying nice, like that is nice. that is what you're taking with you you're t the the at the end of the day if you go to a really good party and you get a gift at that party you talk about that party sure that party was awesome bro and i got this you that, know what i'm saying uh, but you could get a cool gift but if that party was shitty you're going to talk about that shitty that party was. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Like, nice. So it doesn't matter if you did an amazing tattoo, but the party sucked. That's the experience that you really sold to that client. Facts. You yeah. know? And that's why wholeheartedly, man, I've seen and I've worked with people that sucked at tattooing, but their clients had a great time sure. with them. And they left happy. They freaking talk about them like they're the best tattooer in the right. world, man. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. You create an experience, you create a memory and you create a bond yeah. and that bond is for life, yes. bro. Yeah. For life. You are marking someone for life. Yep. They'll go to the grave defending you. If Absolutely. you give them a good experience. If you, you know give them I mean? a good experience. Right. You know There's a saying? lot of great, amazing artists that are broke because they're dicks. Yes. And no one wants to be working with them and no one wants to support them because it's such a, like people will, people will 
like vote with their money, man. And they're going to vote for the nice guy. They're going to vote for the cool girl. They're going to vote for the person who they're comfortable with and give them a good experience. And, and there, and, and that's, you know, I mean, it's, 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 it goes right into your, you know, your whole, your whole experience. It's like people, if people make you feel good, you want that feeling again. You know what I mean? It, like you said, I think you wrapped it up really good. So uh, we have a question for you. Cause I mean, sure, sure, sure. uh, we, we've seen your stuff and, and your work and we've seen you kind of transition to do a lot more art, a lot more painting, a lot of more fine art. Yes. You know, yeah. how do, you know, I've never wanted to kind of transition to that part of, uh, I love to, I love to tattoo more than I love to paint. Okay. You know, like I always thought of like painting as an exercise for tattooing. Oh, wow. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Like never as its own thing. <laughs> it's like I paint so I can tattoo better. You know, right, right, right. <laughs> like, I get it. Yeah. like that's how I always kind of saw it in my head. I'm like, oh, yeah, this is my exercise so I can do this. But and eventually I want to go to tattoo this. It was never like right. just for the painting. Yeah. Um, how did you transition your career to to kind of balance those things out? Right. Uh, so, yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, I grew up always uh, just with art. Art was just my dad was an artist. So I always grew up with art. Um, I love to draw and I was always intimidated to paint like, you know, because it's a lot more materials. I was a broke dude as a kid, you know. So like uh, I started painting, you know, just with like dude, India ink and water, like like kind of like exactly how we do gray shade tattoos. Now that was like what I used to paint with. Um, that was always a passion of mine and I kept doing it for forever. You know, I was always like painting after I would come home from tattooing, I would paint more just cause you know, like you get these ideas, people like, you know, and maybe you'll design a tattoo, but the person doesn't want it the way you designed it. Yeah. So they want it the way that they designed it. Uh, they, you know, you make it a change, but you're like, I could have made this a better tattoo. So I would start painting the things that were kind of like the leftover ideas. And I loved, I love painting, man. So, um, I've always had this passion to want to be a painter, you know, my whole life. And, uh, I, I, I basically just kept going, man. And I was a painting so much, uh, probably as long as a little bit longer than I was been tattooing. But the thing about painting is it's so hard to break through into the fine art world that it's very discouraging for, for a lot of painters. Yes. You know, it's hard, man, because you know, <clears throat> it's hard. like in tattooing. Here's the thing you know, when you start out tattooing, people are more excited to get a tattoo than they care if it's good. Yeah. I mean, they just want a tattoo. Yeah. You know, so like when you're apprenticing, you have a line around the corner of people who want a tattoo, but when you're painting and now you have to get someone to pay for something you made. Yeah. I mean, that's hard. You know? We were saying it before I went to school for, for art. I did uh illustration. Yeah. Right. And uh, even then I knew that it was going to be very difficult to become sure a successful paid illustrator, paid illustrator yes, right? Hard. And then I saw the guys in the hall down the, uh, in the classroom down the hall who were doing uh, their fine art um, bachelor's degree. Right. Yeah. I was like, man, at least I have people willing to pay for like editorials or whatever. Yeah. Like they're going to pay me for these, these paintings in their magazines. Like you're just hoping someone's going to buy something off of you. Right? <laughs> yeah. 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 How are you going to make some money off of that? And even still like, I, I stopped doing illustration yeah. because there was no money in it. It's, yeah. it's, it's yeah. very hard it's to make money. It's very hard to make money. Yes. In it. It's really discouraging. Um, but what I did was I just loved doing it so much. I would start, I would do these like comic conventions. I would do all these shows, like these like different shows where I would just go there and I would paint live. I, and I don't, uh, if you see my video, I paint with two hands. Like I'll do like great black and gray, you know, um, black and gray tattoos, black and gray paintings with two hands. I use like these paint, uh, these, uh, ink brushes that have like uh like water at the back of them. And it's like a brush at the tip Yeah, yeah, yeah and I'll, yeah, yeah. Bl I'll blend and paint at the same time. So like working in conjunction. So I was, uh, you know, I just kind of do this at all these shows, sell some prints, sell some paintings. Uh, but I was doing it at uh, New York comic con and I actually got approached by a really, really amazing, um, person there. And, uh, uh, he represented uh, James Coleman. I don't know. So James Coleman is basically, if you've ever seen a Disney movie, he probably did art in it. Oh shit, cool. So James, you know, they said he wants to have a meeting with you, right? So I'm like freaking out. And then it becomes like, we're flying you to California to to have this meeting. We have this meeting and it's like, dude, I'm meeting a, a legend, one of my heroes in the art world, man. Mm -hmm. This guy's amazing. Uh, Disney artist for 23 years, then became like a fine painter and just dominated the painting world too. So I'm like, yeah, man, I, I'll, I want to, I want, you to be my mentor in painting. I, I bring my paintings in and, you know, and, and I just start working with this company and just, it's been a great marriage ever since, you know? So, um, it's been a phenomenal uh, experience, man. I've been, I've traveled all over the world painting. 
Um, uh, I, I get to like see places that I never thought I'd see before. I get to meet amazing people, and uh, it, it's awesome, man. It's, it's, it's this dream come true. You know? So when you're flying all over these places painting, like what are you actually doing? So I'll do our art auctions all over the world. Okay. I'll, I'll go down to I'll do an art auction somewhere in you know I'm going to South America next week. Uh, I'm, I'm it's like I'll go to the Caribbean. I'll go to all these That's places, awesome. and basically what I'll do is I'll go there. I'll paint live. I'll, I'll and, and just like you know paint in front of like you know two three hundred people and and just you know bring art. I just, I don't stop painting, man. So it's That's it's incredible. It's really cool. It's re 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 really great. Uh, Right. That's you know? awesome, man. It's like, cool. you know, like I few, I know a few uh, <clears throat> people that are muralists, you know? Yeah. And like, that's kind of the experience that they have, you know, like they do murals all the time. And then the people are like, hey, man, I'll fly you here to just paint this mural. They're going to document it. They're going to make a thing out of it, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Paint that mural. That thing's there for until they decide to paint over it, you know? It's awesome. Yeah. It's, 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 you're, you're like, you're putting something, you know, mm -hmm. into the world that, you know, Tattooing, we're doing that, right? We're putting something into the world that makes a, a person feel better about themselves, their bodies and stuff. When you do a painting, it, it like the people who see it feel better. Yeah, you know I mean, like if they're having experience from it, it actually like it alters the, you know, I mean, their their day, maybe their life, you know, what or I mean? their like home, a, you know, like their, home, their space, right? you know, because yeah. I feel like that's the, the power of painting. Like, you know, like you can have a painting that does inspire you, motivate you, create some sort of emotion within you. And then you're like, this thing needs to be, in my like, my, I need to see this every day. I need to yes, see this yeah. every day right. in my office because it freaking puts me in that state of mind where I want to grind or like, yes. I need this in my room because it makes me feel calm and peaceful and quiet. Like, you know, so it's like whatever it, emotion that evokes, you right. know, like, and you connect with that art, like you can definitely put that into your life. And I feel like that's the value of art. You know it, what I'm it's saying? It's true. Yeah. It's unexplainable. <laughs> and you don't get it until you get it. Yeah, I mean, like, uh, you don't get what art is until there's an art that touches you. That touches yeah, you, for exactly. sure. Exactly, and, and that's a hard thing, because that's <laughs> like, trying to explain why, why art is important is the same as trying to explain why religion is important. It's like trying to explain why other things to people are important. It's like, you don't get it until you get it. Right. Yeah, I mean, it, when it hits you, you're like, some people, for some people, it's yoga. For some people, it's like, uh, you don't get it until you get it, man. And once you get it, you're like, dude i'm in yeah i mean yeah for yeah. sure so you know it's been an awesome experience though man i i paint dude, when i i wake up paint all day until like you know my son wakes up when he wakes up it's family time uh he takes a nap i paint again go to the shop you know what i mean tattoo all day come home family time then paint all night go paint yeah dude absolutely um you just have to be consistent you have to get it out there and it's just I've re I'm really lucky to have like uh, found a good groove with the people who I'm working with now. That's awesome. Man. Yeah, it's a cool Great. feeling. Cool fun. I uh, <laughs> I always feel like uh, I'm the one that asked this. So financially, yeah, how does that work out as far as like <laughs> what's? Uh, <laughs> cause I, people want to know. Yeah, people yeah, want to yeah. know. So how does this work? How does this work? Do you do you feel yeah. like it's profitable? Do yeah. you feel like are you, if you were to stop tattooing, would you be able to just paint your way through yeah. your? Yeah. Yeah, I'd be able to paint. Um, uh, yeah. That's, that's awesome. Good. Yeah, it's good. That's awesome. Uh, it's just- you And you know, sell a lot of prints, right? Um, so actually, so now I don't sell anything. Like now my my uh, my gallery sells it, right? So like now what I do is I like, you know, I have like, when I was starting, I got this amazing printer. Like when I first started, and I would, uh, I realized that if I did one painting and I sold it, it was gone forever. So like, I was like, oh man, like, and this is years ago. I was like, yeah. if I get a, printer i can make my own prints so i buy this dude this printer is like almost the size of this desk damn and like this is years ago and it's like the printer i, I want to buy <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's like, awesome. I want it. <laughs> so i photograph my painting this is again years ago right i'm just not now now i'm working with them but uh so i start photographing my paintings learn how to photograph them so that i can make replications um or go right from the printer if it's like you know digital and you can now print out on on canvas so mm -hmm. when i was when i was doing these comic cons and stuff you know, it's hard to sell an original to, at comic, you know, at a, at a, at a horror convention or a comic show or yeah, a yeah, small yeah, show yeah, like yeah. that. It's hard to sell an original to, yeah. to a person. Cause so like I would do these like 16 by 20 canvas prints that were beautiful because it looks like, you know, it was like this, like, you know, cool looks painting. Very close to the real yeah, thing. Exactly. Yeah. And I could make them at affordable prices and stuff like that. So I would do that, you know, when I was like first starting out painting, you know, I like got together and like, uh, I was like, 
I, I like maxed out all my credit cards to buy this printer. And I was like, it was awesome because it really helped me out. You know, I, you probably saw me at the tattoo convention. Yeah, man. Yeah, I saw yeah, you all like, the time. Yeah. We're seeing you so like, for years. Yeah, man. I would be at the tattoo convention. And it would be like my, my booth would always be a corner booth with just paintings and prints up there, man. Yeah. And it's just like, that was the only stage that I can get for a long time. You were actually my inspiration for doing that exact thing. Cause I do the same no thing. No way, yeah. dude. Are you kidding me? Yeah. <laughs> and now I look at his stuff and I'm like, <laughs> yes. And yeah. Cause that's what I do You're now. Amazing. I, I mean, You're I amazing. do all my stuff digitally, yeah. but I do the same thing. I, I right. have my own printer at home. I yeah. mean, it's not nearly as big as the one that you had. I got yeah. a 17 inch wide printer. It's awesome. But I do the same thing, yeah. you know, um, constantly, man. I, it, 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 I mean, it's not, uh, I'm not going to be able to support my entire family with it, but no, it's but a good it's, chunk it's of change good. to it's help good, out with. I think like yeah. one thing that you guys just told people out there and maybe not this directly, but it's like, Hey guys, invest in yourself. Yes. They dude. invested into their right. careers. They bought something to pursue this dream that yes. they had, you know, at a point where maybe you didn't have the outside validation of like, yeah, man, you should fuck. No, no, no. It's like, right. this is what I see for myself. This is what I want. And you put in the time, the effort and the investment and investing into yourself to create the things that you want to create, to be able to monetize and market yourself. And I think that too many people fail to do that. They think that some, like what you're talking about, like somebody's going to come at your door right. and just offer the opportunity that you eventually got of like, hey man, we like your work and we want to market your work to these galleries and we want you to do this. That's not going to happen if you don't start that on your own right. to begin with. Facts, you know, facts. you had to show that you are committed to your work, your devoted to your pursue of this dream. And then somebody says like, Oh, that guy's really about it. You know what I'm saying? Let's yep. invest some time and money into him yeah. and put him in front of the right people, et cetera. And then you're going to grow. But I feel like too many people, like whether you're a, a freaking artist, a singer or whatever, it doesn't matter if you're a fucking great singer, but you only sing in the shower, bro. <laughs> preach man and to piggyback off of that too if you're only singing in the shower i would have never known that he was at the conventions making these prints right, right. so yeah. i saw him with these prints with this printer at the convention i'm like fuck man that's awesome i made a connection with him <laughs> we became buddies yep. and now like because of that now i'm doing the same thing absolutely right. like, man. You, know, you make these connections you Dude, you, know, you feed off of each other like that it's crazy yeah, yeah. absolutely yep. you, you know you you, you had said something really true, man. I, I remember when I was going to buy this thing and I was like, oh my God, it's so much money. And I'm looking at it and I'm like, dude, if I don't believe in myself this much, why would anybody- Why would believe anyone me? believe in you, Why dude? would anyone believe in me? <laughs> yeah. like, why would anyone care about me if I don't care about myself to do this? Dude, you know? 100%, bro. 100%. <laughs> I love it. Uh, yeah, man. And I, I, you know, that's a big uh, thing that I think- um, also, you mentioned real quick, just because I'm going to like piggyback on what you said about outside validation. Um, you know, it, it's like people, too many people are waiting for someone else to- you To know, recognize uh, their talent. Right, right. Or, or give them approval for something. And it's like, dude, no one has to like what you're doing. Yeah, you know I mean? Not it, like, like, but you have to like it. You know what I mean? Like, so if that's the thing you want to do, do it. But yeah. don't expect people to just like automatically like kind of like, you know, um, you know, like- for example, like when I was a kid, I was a skater kid. I was a punk rock kid, right? So like, you know, you would like dye your hair green, right? And you were like 50% of the people are going to think this is cool. 50% are going to hate it. You know what I mean? But you did it for you, right? Yeah. You you had to kind of like take that chance, whether it be like fashion or something, like something you were going to wear, you're going to cut your you hair. You had to take a chance. Had to take a chance. But you went out and you left your house and you were like, let's see what happens. But like nowadays- like if somebody does that and you don't like it, dude, you're getting canceled. You're getting fired. And it's like, <laughs> that's the exact opposite. Yeah. Dude, The like that's the exact opposite of punk rock. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, like punk rock means you just like, they did what they wanted. They didn't care. They what went they against like. the grain. Went wow. against the grain. But now the exact opposite of punk rock is, com you know, complaining that people didn't compliment the thing that you did that was outsider. And you're like, bro, but like, you know, that's, you did that. You know yeah. I mean? Like you don't need outside validation because the thing that you're doing should be a, a self-validating. Yeah. Thing. You know what I mean? Absolutely. So, yeah. So sorry, man. You just. 
get on my get my soapbox <laughs> real quick. Man. Yeah, I just I like I get heated sometimes. <laughs> That's good. I'm like, That's you good. can't be waiting for everyone to pat you on the back. If you want to do something, do it. Do it. But expect the fact that you know probably half will love it, and half of it just yeah, not that they hate it, up, bro. They just won't care. If you're you know if what you're I mean? gonna it's, go into tattooing, by the way, guys, if you're gonna go into tattooing yeah. expecting to be fucking cuddled, bro, you're in the wrong, wrong fucking business. business, bro. Get the yeah, fuck out exactly. of here, bro. You're not gonna get cuddled. You're gonna get yep. shit on yep. for a long time by everybody. <laughs> and guess what, though? The beauty of that is that when the people that shit on you, especially if you're an apprentice and you're going through this still, where mm -hmm. people are shitting you every fucking day. You do something cool and they're like, that fucking sucks. And they tell you, try again. The day that those people are like, hey, bud, that was fucking pretty good, man. You yep. just named that. Oh, that, that feels so good. That feels oh, so dude. good. Man. It feels so good. <laughs> that shit you know? is so uh, good. <laughs> you need that, though. You need that adversity to, uh, not even, a, uh, I take back the word adversity. You need that tough love to get better. For you sure. You know what I mean? Because if people just tell you you're great all the time when you're not great, you, you know what I mean? It's like, this is what I always say. I'm like, would you get tattooed by that person? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you're telling them that their, their art's great. Would you get that tattoo? You know? And it's like, most, you could get tattooed by this person or that person. Who do you choose? Well, you that's the I mean? problem like, with like the fucking fourth place, fifth place, sixth right, place right. trophies, facts, bro. Facts, what facts, the facts. fuck is happening, facts. bro? Why Yo, is there I, a fifth place trophy, I have bro? been in a lot of tattoo contests. I never got a fifth place trophy. <laughs> yeah. you know I mean, I never saw a fifth place trophy. Can you imagine, bro, that your tattoo is the fifth, your tattoo yeah. is the fifth best? It's the fifth best. <laughs> bro it's the fifth best <laughs> it's like Get no man it's like daddy. listen bro but you know what man like here's the thing dude and i know you guys too man you've won tattoo contests right yeah we've all won yeah. tattoo contests and we've all lost tattoo contests yeah and you know what you do you don't when you lose you don't go like i'm never entering again you go like all right bro let's bring it next time exactly. i'm gonna get it yes and that's like what i you know that's that that's what you have to do in and this, in, you know? to add to what you're saying dude the only tattoo contest that i cared about was the ones that I beat people mm. that I cared about. Wow. All wow. the other ones were like, whatever, yeah, bro. Yeah. But if it was in a tattoo contest where I'm like, oh, dude, that dude's a badass, bro. Yeah, but I yeah. got him. I'm like, fuck Yo, yes. Yes. You, right, when it's That's attitude. the one that felt good. All the other ones like, ah, whatever, yeah. bro. Yeah. <laughs> shout, out, shout out to uh, Mike Can. <laughs> I remember Mike, Mike Can, Can, dude. <laughs> so Asbury Park, I want to say this I was- I love that Asbury Park show, I want to say this was 2000. I love it. Uh, Fuck, maybe 2014, 2015, maybe. Um, tattoo of the day contest, man. It was, it was a shootout between me and my can, and I Ooh. beat him, dude. What? Dude, it felt so good. Yeah, <laughs> it felt so good. Yes. Yo. And you know what, dude? He was such a good sport about it. Afterwards, we went to Asbury Lane. So, like, man. You won. Awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> awesome. Let me buy That's you a drink. Awesome. Let me buy wow. you uh, a lane right now. Like, he was really awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. Dude, man. I'll tell you what, man. That Asbury Park show is awesome. And what I loved about it was the trophies were awesome. Yes. Yeah, because like the, the trophies that I have are sick, dude. Like I got the one where it's the crystal, like the dude with the, you know, the, um, what's, I can't think of his name right now. And everyone's going to- The like, face, the Asbury that, Park. Yeah, Asbury yeah. Park face, dude. Sorry, guys. I'm, I'm sorry. I just like slipped my mind. But like that, I got the crystal one of that. Then I got the one where it's the skull with the hands. Nice. And I got the uh, the Aaron Kane. I got one. the Aaron Kane one too. Oh, <laughs> nice. My God, dude. Aaron, it's like a spiral. Yeah. Uh, it's like a spiral, uh, like almost like a snail shell. Yeah, 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 yeah. Dude, those are the three I got from Azure yeah. Park. I love. They're awesome because they're so unique. They're like sculptures. You know, that's mm -hmm. awesome. Yeah. So when you get one of those, you feel so good. <laughs> but there's not a better feeling in the world than when when the judges are like, we're calling back number 17. Yes. And you're like, yeah, yes. <laughs> let's go. <laughs> That's the greatest feeling in the world when you know you're in it and yeah. you're like, oh, dude, I love it. Awesome. I feel like this is part of being a nice competitive tattooer. And like, you know, like we've talked about this before about like, you know, sometimes like, especially for me, man, like when I'm in like a tight spot, that's sometimes when like, you know, the best comes out. Yeah, absolutely. Man. You know, especially when you're tattooing at a convention where there's like a bunch of really good tattooers around. You're like, oh shit, everybody's going to like come around here. Like what the fuck I'm doing yeah. Yeah. to see if I like, especially if you're like, if you're good on social media and people have known who the hell you are, they're going to come look at your shit in real life. They're yeah. like, let's yeah. see if he's for let's real. Let's see if it's real. Let's, let's see, see if, if that tattoo real. looks like it. Is, is yeah. that all filtered up? You yeah. Know, or, it'll or bullshit. What? Yeah. For sure. Yeah, for sure. 100%. Which man. I've seen a lot of that are filtered up, guys. <laughs> yeah. I've seen a lot of bullshit out there. You know what though? I'm going to I'm going to say something about that. Seeing those filtered photos on photo on uh, that are photoshopped, 
it makes me want to tattoo as good as those filtered photos. Mm. Oh, for sure. Right. So it makes me actually a better tattooer looking at all these other people doctoring up their photos. Yeah. Right. Well, yeah, when, yeah. When, I'm sorry. No, no, no. I was going to say anything. I was just saying, yeah, for oh. sure. No, I was going to say, well, because when you see someone that really over filters a picture and then you look at the thing and like, why does it look good? Oh, because that heavy contrast there and that dark next to the light. And I never thought about that, like saturating that and then kind of like pulling back on, you know, like, so that's what's making it look so good. Yeah. But that's not the way we tattoo. So when you see it done, it's almost like now I'm going to design the tattoo that, that looked like as if it had those tweaks in it. Yeah. The IRL tattoo. Yeah. <laughs> IRL. Yeah. No, it's true, man. It's, uh, you, you know, that's the thing is when you see a tattoo in real life and it looks as good as it did in the picture, man, that's, that's like the, the, the best. And that's the best compliment you can get. You know, that actually just made me think about when my neighbor was asking, why does my tattoos look so much better than everything else that she sees? It's because of that. Because I try to make my tattoos look like yeah. the ones that these phonies are doctoring their right, right, right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, it, you know, it's like I, I'm probably I don't take a lot of pictures. You know, what I mean, like if you look at my thing, I'm the laziest social media post. It's usually, just me like, "Hey guys, what's up? I'm over here now." Yeah, like, it's, like, <laughs> it's, like, it's always like that. It's not really a lot of. Uh, I, I admit, I'm like a terrible uh, poster. You know what yeah, I mean, like I just don't post a lot. Because honestly, I'm like an ADHD kid, right? So when I finish up a cool tattoo and then my next client is already sitting You're gonna in go the paint, chair. bro. We're gonna yeah, yeah, it. I'm going to paint. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but like I, I cannot focus when it's like, oh dude, it's like 348. My next client's coming at four. I gotta let this tattoo bleed out so I can take a picture. Like, you know, so like I can't I get like anxious. <laughs> So I'm like, I'll get it next time. I'll get it next time. So you know, I do I mean, one tattoo a day. Yeah. You do really? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Nice. I've learned to take as much care about what happens after the tattoo as what happens during the tattoo. Mm. Yes. Because like the patience of like when you're saturating an area and you're like, I need to really saturate it. So I'm going to take my time and saturate this is the same as like. I'm about to take this photo. I need to take my time and yeah. just let this well, tattoo breathe and facts, relax facts. and chill. I need to do this. I need to this person to chill the fuck out. You're not going anywhere, bro. Right, We're right. not done until I take this photo and I feel good about it. I look at it. I'm like, I got a good one. Sweet. Now we're done, bro. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, nice. it, it, like it's that. big. It's important to be able to tell people and slow them down. Um, like my client today was freaking out because he was fucking over it. I mean, like the <laughs> everything where I was tattooing him, it sucked, you know? But like, you know, towards the end, I was like, hey, dude. We're almost there, bro. Yeah. You know, we're almost there. And then it, my favorite is when you're like, when you're like almost done and then they're like, hey, I know this is like the back question, but like how much longer? <laughs> how much longer? Like longer, like longer. And then I'm like, and then I told I was like, I can tell you five minutes if it's going to make you feel better. Bro. <laughs> it's always five minutes. It's always five minutes. <laughs> like, I'll say five minutes over and over and over, yeah. bro. As long as it gives you a fucking place in your mind to shut the fuck up. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Just five but more minutes. Five more minutes, bro. But it's like. You know, sometimes they just need to hear that. Yeah, Five more yeah. minutes, Brenda. Yeah. I didn't talk about what I did this week, but uh, I'll talk about right now. The, the guy that I did today, um, it was his first tattoo. And I did a, a son and the son had a beard. And then there were two, <laughs> <laughs> there were two swords going behind him, like kind of crisscrossing like a skull and crossbones kind of effect. But uh, it was his first tattoo. He was here for like five hours. And towards the end of the tattoo, or at the end of the tattoo, we're done. I took pictures. And he was like, all right, cool, man. He's ready to put his jacket on. Oh, oh, yeah. like, oh. I got to still like, I got to wrap you up. I got to clean <laughs> yeah, imagine that guy out for to take off that jacket. Like, <laughs> yeah. Oh, like, dude. no, 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 wait. <laughs> yeah, sometimes Yo, those guys are just, like so eager to get out of Yo. here. You got to just, psh, yeah. hold it's on It's like they freak out because yeah. they're like, it's, it's done. I'm out. It's yeah. done. I'm like, done, man. If I leave, nothing else can happen. <laughs> 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 you can't hurt me anymore. <laughs> yeah. I get it, man. I get it. I, I, you kind of like get this sense of like how much more the person has left in them. Oh, yeah. And there's just sometimes where you could be like, I could just wrap it up for today and just come back. Or you're just like, no, nah, you, you got to stick with it. Oh, yeah. You know I mean, like, I told that shit to my dude it. today, dude. Yeah. I was like, dude. We're going to finish this today. Yeah. I was like, no matter what happens, wow. this is getting done today. So just yeah. get your head in the game because wow. this, we're going to finish today. And by hour four, we're Oof. the fourth hour. And I could tell that he was like, 
I'm over this. I'm over it. <laughs> I'm over it. Yeah. And I was like, you got like two more yeah, hours left to go, yeah, player. Dude. You're going to oh, have to man. earn this tat today. It's yep. your day to earn it, dude. Like, yeah. this is it, you know? And it's like, I oh. got you, man. The fun- Yo, I'm not even making this up. The funniest thing I ever saw was back back in the day in my old shop, this kid wanted to get a tattoo that said only the strong survived. <laughs> <laughs> he can do it. And he so, was not that strong. out on the <laughs> Yo, I was like, bro, you picked the wrong tattoo for that saying. You picked the wrong saying for that tattoo, bro. He was like, nah, good. Later. I'm like, damn, dude. Only a strong survivor. Oh, I was like, that'd be sick. Me? That'd be actually like such a good, like, only the strong survive. Yeah, like a meme. <laughs> like, that'd be a perfect meme. Like, 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 a, like a dad t shirt. Yeah, yeah, I mean, like, shade up. Right? Just like, yeah. just like the outlining ends and fades up. Yeah, it <laughs> just funny, trickles bro. out. Dude, so yeah, good. I swear. I saw it. I was like, are you kidding me, man? I was like, uh, this is so how we're doing it. Now. Bro. Wow. That's great. People hit their limit in different ways, man. I used to see people, there's, it's almost like the, the stages of grief. People start bargaining with you. People start being like, yeah, what time is it? What time is it? I got to get home. My, my dog's going to piss all over the carpet. You know, like, they start like making up excuses. Then they're like, I got to come back anyway. Like, I, you hear it all, man. Like, you oh, know, yeah. it's like, dude, it's I funny. bet some people have made up some imaginary dogs for me. Oh, bro. yeah, bro. I'm like, you ain't got a dog. <laughs> <laughs> I got my grandpa's funeral. Didn't your grandpa die last week? Yeah, yeah my different, different grandpa. grandpa. <laughs> different grandpa. My other grandpa. <laughs> yeah. They were married. <laughs> but uh, yeah, dude, people just come up with anything. It's like, you know, it's like, but like, dude, when you hit the wall, you hit the wall. But you know, it's funny. I do uh, shorter sessions. Unless the person specifically asked for like a full day sessions, I do uh, two four hour sessions a day. Four hours is still a good amount of time. It's a good four, amount of time, dude. Yeah. I, after three hours, yeah. I don't want to get tattooed anymore. No, that's me like too. Me my too. limit. The right. three hour mark, it's like done. I don't want to do this anymore. Yeah, but I can give you five. Right, five is like where yep. I'm like, all right, this sucks, but I can do it. You know. Yeah. But three hours is like the perfect. I, I can get tattooed perfect. for three hours, and I'm like, sweet. I Every can go week. about my yeah. day. It's yeah. fine. But like four or five, I'm like, oh, fuck, I don't want to do this. Oh, no way, man. No. And, and it's how you time that five hours too. Yeah. You know, because like you can't work. It, you can, if you kind of like, there's like an art to tattooing besides the art of tattooing. For right? sure. Like, like half of it is like. Doing, it's like running a marathon. Right. Exactly. And you're like, all right. So I'm going to work on this part. It's going to puff up, then it's going to chill out. And yeah. like, as I'm working throughout this piece, like, you know what I mean? Like, do you remember the old days when you would just, and, and like for like, you know, you like you outline everything, right? Like uh, for like, um, there was like this big kind of transformation in realistic tattooing at some point where people were like, I'm not going to outline something I'm not going to touch for three hours. You yeah. know what I mean? So they just started doing this thing where like it was printer kind of like, style, the yeah, printer, right, printer yeah. style, zip, 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 zip. <laughs> And, um, that was like revolutionary to me because I was like, by the time I get, do the fur on the bottom of this bear, and then I go back to the eyes, the eyes are puffed off the skin, you know, a quarter of an inch. So like that kind of like, uh, those little things that you learn to, uh, adjust how you tattoo time wise, yeah. like you can time this thing to kind of swell up and, and, and then chill and then give it some time. Like that's an art in itself, man. Realism tattooers do that. No. And traditional tattooers, um, they would go from like outline, I'm going to outline everything. And I'm going to do all the black and everywhere. everywhere. And I'm going to do yeah. all the red and everywhere. Yes. And, gonna, and uh, it kind of, similar to how you're saying it, yeah. where you would kind of do like the the printer style tattoo. Sure. Instead of doing every uh, all the black everywhere, all the red everywhere, you kind of work like, oh, I'm going to color this pedal, yes. this entire pedal here. And then I'm going to do this entire pedal here and just work in sections. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's that's It like, helps so much. It makes man, people sit so much longer. So much Absolutely. longer. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's more um, tedious sometimes, but what's his know. name? Darwin, uh, Dar- uh, shout out Darwin Enriquez. Enriquez, oh, dude. freaking phenomenal! Amazing. But like, you know, he had like he has a really good video on uh, on his Instagram kind of explaining his process. And uh, he did this huge like half sleeve on a dude, and he's like doing all the blacks, mids, white highlights <laughs> in like a whole section, wow. and then moving up to the next session to do the whole thing, like wow. you know, wow, to be able to do the whole tattoo. Yeah. Where he's doing like, you know, kind of breaking it up in like little groups where he's doing the full thing, you know, yeah. like including the whites. Wow. So by the end of your tattoo, the whites that you did in the beginning are like, they've been settled, bro. Yeah. They're, no, they're not bleeding. It's they're not, not pink. Yeah. yeah, they're not pink. It's just set. It's been sitting there for like three, four hours already. Wow. Wow. So like it does create a different things. And it's like, it's so important of how you approach 
you know, certain tattoos. Sure. Yeah. And uh, like, that's something that I feel like, you know, I've learned of like, you know, like what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah. Of like, even with like, you know, I don't do realism tattoos, but I still approach them the same way. I'm like, I know that if I like stay right here, I'm going to be able to do that up there later. Yeah. And he's going to sit so much better. Right. I've had comments sure. on videos, like time lapses that I've done of the entire tattoo where people have asked because I've done that approach. And then people are asked like, how do you do that without wiping into your tattoo and not right. staining the colors? Like you just got to, you know, you gotta plan. <laughs> yeah, you got to be careful. Yeah, you got to plan out where you're wiping. You got to like, I called it, uh, I called it uh, planned out wiping or whatever I called it. But it's like, yeah. you got to like awesome. wipe yeah. in the direction that is away from the tattoo yeah. that you already did. Right. Dude, that's that's a strategy that you learn the hard way. You remember the first time you wiped away a stencil when you first started? Uh, oh my god, dude, those cold sweats. <laughs> those are the Yo, big sweats. Bro. You get this sweat about you. You're like, I, I just gotta run to the bathroom. You take that wipe, and you're like, Phew. first of all, your line drawings, which your line drawings are amazing. Yeah, every time I look at it, I'm like, dude, so they're clean. like, they're like so clean, you know. But like when you're starting out, dude, your line drawings are like terrible, dude. Oh, like yeah, you're leaving, yeah, yeah. you're putting too many, like <clears throat> too much. Uh, I call it information. Yes. Yeah, I mean, too like much it's too much information on there, and you're trying to follow it all, and you just do this wipe, and then like, you know, two two perpendicular lines or uh, two parallel lines now are like became one line halfway <laughs> through, and you're like, oh my god, <laughs> you know. So that was that. Until you get it, like those cold sweats of like your apprentice wiping away a stencil, man. Oh my yeah. God, dude. When I, uh, before I started designing everything on my iPad, mm -hmm. my stencils were super loose and really? like just like randomly, like lines were not touching or like points were not touching. And uh, I, I learned from one of the guys who taught me how to tattoo. He was saying, use your stencil, not so much as like a stencil, but just as like a guide for where you want your tattoo to be. To nice. be. Nice. And then just kind of just do your tattoo. Wow. Like don't rely on your stencil so much. And uh, so for a very long time before I got the iPad, um, my stencils were just like really scratchy, just wow. super loose. And I just, I drew my tattoo as I was tattooing. Wow. I think yeah. that's the best that's way, cool. honestly, yeah. you know, like uh, I've done a few things where, you know, like uh, if I'm doing something over a body part, like um, I did a Phoenix mm -hmm. um, not too long ago that's sitting on a guy's shoulder, you know, and, uh, Instead of drawing all the feathers, I knew I was going to freehand the feathers, mm -hmm. but I still stenciled the guidelines. Right. The, the, the light, the, the angle. The angle. Yes. Yeah. I just stenciled the angle and like, I'm like, all right, this is going to be the row of feathers. This is going to nice. be the next row of sure. feathers, you know, cause I knew that I was like, this is where I want these things to be. But I know if I want these lines to be nice and straight, I'm going to have to freehand right. this because of the body part, you know? Yeah. So it worked out really good. To then have everything just like break out where I was like, all right, I'm going to stencil this head. Give me these guidelines. And then I was like, I'm going to freehand these yeah. feathers. I've drawn feathers a fucking bazillion times. Sure, I'm like, this will sure. be easy. And it, and yeah. it just made everything so much faster. I'm like, man, yeah. I just saved so much time. The hacks that you learn. Yeah. You know what I mean, it's just, you know, it, it's just about, like you said, like kind of like seeing where you want your tattoo to be. And the hardest thing is convincing the client that it's going to be okay. Right. Because they don't. And it's not their fault. They just don't have they the don't vision, see right? We, the, we have the vision because we know, we, you know, like, it's like, you know, it's like, if, if you have to go to the doctor, it's like your doctor's done this 10,000 times. Like yeah. he's not nervous about it. We're nervous because it's our first time. That's the way they feel. Yeah. So that's a special kind of patience <clears throat> to be like, the reason I'm doing it this way is because if I do it on the paper, the paper's square, man. The second I put this, you got bones and angles and muscles and things moving and stuff. And it's just not going to work the same as it works on there. And sometimes people get it, but sometimes people get a little nervous when they see you start. You yeah. Know? So Christian, man, yeah, thank awesome. you so much for dude, coming, dude. It's my absolute yeah. honor and pleasure, it's man. Been thank way you too so long. much. It's just been awesome, man. You got two of the greatest guys and and like just two of the kindest souls and talented artists that I know in the industry. I'm happy to call them friends and I'm happy to be here. Um, dude, just We're happy to have you, man. Thank you, man. That means a lot. And uh, you know, if if you are a young tattooer, man, just every day. Just you're gonna get a little bit better, uh, but if this is your first year, realize that you're gonna look back when you get as many years as we have, and you're gonna be like, "I didn't know anything back then." And it's not a discouragement; it should encourage you because every day it's like something new is happening. So just live in this world and just uh, just grow. It's the best time. Absolutely, yeah. man. Couldn't have said better. Awesome, man. Anyways, thank you guys so much, and we're checking out. Always follow us on. Make sure you like this fucking video, guys. A lot of you guys are watching and not liking and subscribing. Please do that. It means a lot. It pushes us on the YouTube algorithm. It really does help. 
And uh, mix the ball, keep tattooing, keep putting your passion into tattooing, and keep pushing this craft forward. We love you guys.